Good evening and welcome to the Las Vegas Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Before we get started, I just wanna go over a couple of housekeeping announcements um, for the presentation. Just so you know, you can use that Q&A button at the bottom of your screen to type any questions that you have for our presenters at any time throughout this presentation. If you have a general question that you would like for each institution to answer, go ahead and ask that general question. But if you have a question that is specific for one particular institution, go ahead and note that in your question so that we know that that one particular institution needs to answer um, your question. Also for our attendees, your camera and your microphone are off, so the panelists will not be able to see or hear you. And also, this is just one of many different sessions that we're offering with StriveScan, so um, we hope that you'll take advantage of many of the other sessions that we have and you can sign up for those sessions where you registered for this one. Also, we will be recording this session along with all other sessions that are taking place. So um, you can access those recordings probably within about a week at the same site where you registered for this particular program, okay? So at this point, I'd like to go ahead and turn it over to our first presenter tonight, who is from the Savannah College of Art and Design. Okay. Hi, everybody. I am going to go ahead and get my screen share going. Um, in the meantime, my name is Susie Ramuda. I am an assistant director of admission at SCAD, the Savannah College of Art and Design. Um, we were founded back in 1978, but we have grown um, to be pretty large since then. So we started back in 1978 with 71 students and one campus location, one building. We now actually have a campus location in Atlanta, Georgia, study abroad in Lacoste, France. We still have our primary campus in Savannah and we have two online learning programs. I will go back um, a little bit toward the end and kind of give you guys the difference between those two different learning programs. Started with 71 students about 40, 43 years ago. We now have about 15,000 students across our different campus locations. The students are truly coming from all 50 states. I myself am actually based in Denver, Colorado. So I work with students from the Mountain West area, a little bit of the Midwest as well. Um, but students attending SCAD from all 50 states and from more than 100 countries. The current international student body percentage on our campus is about 25%. So a quarter of our students are coming from or to SCAD from another country or learning right now virtually from another country. So one of uh, my favorite parts about SCAD outside of all the students where they're coming from is how many major programs that we offer. We have 44 major programs at SCAD and over 75 minor options. And I always kind of like to mention um, the difference between some of these. So we've got both art and design, two different fields that we often see blend together. So we have degrees like animation, photography, fashion, um, performing arts. We also though have some more design oriented degrees. We have furniture design, we have themed entertainment design, architecture, interior design. We have user experience design. Um, one of my favorites, Google actually came to SCAD and asked us to create a major curriculum for UX design. So that's kind of a fun one and we do some industry level projects with Google. Um, we also recently had one of our graduates who had actually studied immersive reality at SCAD. He's now a UX designer at Google, but doing immersive reality, which is a blend of uh, augmented reality, virtual reality concepts. So quite a bit here. We also have some more business oriented degrees, but they all are gonna center around the art and design industries. Collaboration's a big, big part of what we do at SCAD. Um, we believe it's important to cross collaborate between these different major programs. Um, and outside of just collaborating while you're at SCAD, you're graduating with a pretty solid network of people from your industry or a closely related industry. One of our alum, Christopher John Rogers, graduated from SCAD with a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Fashion. He now has his own fashion clothing line. Um, last year, he won the 2019 CFDA Vogue Fashion Fund Award. That's cool. What's cooler is that his whole clothing company is all SCAD graduates. And they're not all just from the different just from fashion. They're from dramatic writing, fashion marketing and management, industrial design. So you are graduating, collaborating with an entire network, um, which leads to my next point. We're really, really big on career preparation at SCAD. 
So we currently have a 99% job placement rate. Within 10 months of graduation, 99% of our graduates were employed seeking a higher degree or both at one time. I talked too much, so this slide already moved on, but 91% of those 99% reported working um, in a creative field, their major program or something closely related. That number is a really important part of that 99%. If you guys want more stats on that, please come to me at the end. My info is posted. I'm always happy to chat more about like career prep with you because it's a huge part of what we do and it's the reason you're coming to learn at SCAD. Uh, we already mentioned our, or I already mentioned our different campus locations, Atlanta, Savannah, Lacoste, France for study abroad. And I said we have two online learning programs, e-learning, go at your own pace. You're not signing on for a specific class time, but you are a SCAD student. This is pretty good for our non-traditional learners, those that want to get their foot in the door early on, um, industry-wise, start working. Um, SCAD now is going to be more like meet on Zoom for class from 3 to 5 or 9 to 11. So you have two virtual options. One is a little more hands off. The way that you apply to SCAD is you either apply through Common App or through our website. Um, SCAD.edu slash apply will do that for you. Once you complete the application, which just means submitting it to us, an admission advisor reaches out. You would then have an assigned advisor. They take you through the rest of the application process all the way through enrolling you in your first couple classes at SCAD. They'll talk scholarships with you. They're your SCAD financial advisor. Um, and they're gonna request the two things we need to complete the transcript, or I'm sorry, the um, application process, which is transcripts and test scores. All we're looking for, we do not require a portfolio at SCAD, but we will accept a portfolio for scholarships. So let me quickly get to my contact info before I sign off here, in case anyone wants to copy that down, take a picture. Do what you got to do, but please come to me. I'm happy to discuss scholarships more in depth, application process, tuition, anything that you need to know. Thank you for your time. Very much appreciate you guys. I think that was six minutes and I didn't want to go over, um, but I can keep talking too. Am I good? Okay, sorry. Rocky Mountain College of Art and Design, go ahead. All right. Good evening, everyone. Hello, my name is Juliet, and welcome to the session for the Future Art Stars. As an artist myself, I'm always excited to share information about a small premier art and design college located in Denver called Rocky Mountain College of Art and Design, also known as REMCAD. Um, this is going to be where your creativity is going to come to life. In these six minutes, I aim to highlight some of what makes REMCAD unique. I'm going to share how we will support your dreams of becoming an amazing artist. And um, the images that you see scrolling by are going to be images of students that um, were in one of these areas of study here. So here you see our BFA degrees and you can expect to receive a quality, well-rounded education. These are all accredited degrees held to a high degree of accountability, and these programs are diverse and creative nature, which will lead you into a wide variety of skills obtained for different types of careers. Whether online or on campus, our commitment is to you and your future. So do you guys see an area that you're interested in? Anything from photography, fashion design, illustration, graphic design, Awesome, that means you're a creative. We're gonna help evolve your craft and we're gonna get you more information about REMCAD today. So some of you might be asking the question, why art school? Can't I learn what I need to learn online through YouTube and tutorials? And the answer is this. 84% of the jobs in creative industries are obtained through networking. So by attending events, connecting with other students, faculty member and, and alumni, you're gonna be building your network. So then the question to really ask yourself is why REMCAD? Well, we have small class sizes, we have strong foundation classes and a unique degree sequence that is designed with the creative student in mind. REMCAD students are only required to take two classes per eight weeks. And this is going to allow for a deeper exploration into the creative projects, ultimately relieving stress and anxiety from being put under too much pressure for other classes. 
Other distinctions are at REMCAD, you'll be taught by real artists, designers, and liberal arts professionals who have lived and worked in their, their industries. We embrace originality and the fact that nobody is perfect, except maybe my dog. My dad, my dog's probably perfect. But yeah, so if you're weird, that's okay. We believe weird stands for wonderful, exciting, interesting, real, and different. So stay weird. Now I have to tell you about our new program. This is gonna allow you to continue upgrading your skill sets for free after you graduate. That's right, yes, free. So think about how much technology is going to change in the next 10, 20, 30 years. This is gonna allow you to stay on top of your game, updating your skills for life, because at REMCAD we have a lifelong learning philosophy. We're gonna stick with you. So not only is the Renew program free, but so are the resources and um, services provided by career and alumni services. Students have access to our exclusive job board, which includes internships, professional development workshops, videos, career advising, all geared toward assisting the student to find their dream job. Some of our graduates have landed jobs with companies like Google, ESPN, DreamWorks, Microsoft, and like the alumni featured here, Paul Trani. Paul is a talented graphic designer who works for Adobe. He's going to actually teaches and promotes their software programs. And he's quoted here on how important it was to have been taught by experts working in the field. As you look at our resources on campus and online, you're going to notice our health and wellness center listed. Um, access to our counselors to work with you one-on-one -on -one will be available, especially in this time and age. Uh, in addition, many of these resources allow our students to work together. Again, allows for networking in the industries. So some of these uh, events um, are open to the public. Feel free to check it out on our website, events like the VASD lectures, where we host uh, artists from around the world to speak to our community. You all are welcome to join, so just check out the calendar events on our website. And then all of these events have been moved online this year, which leads me to respond how we, um, leads me to answer how we've responded to the pandemic. So basically we've created a, a blended plus learning experience, which is hybrid learning, allowing for students safe access to on-campus tools and resources while completing most of their class assignments at home. Some campus resources available by appointment include the sewing lab, the fab lab, photography, darkroom, the library, and more. For instance, we just created an internal scholarship called Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, and it's an opportunity that may require the use of these uh, resources. Basically, it's um, an internal scholarship which addresses the prompt, what is your role as an artist during these times of global unrest, and how does it relate to your area of study specifically? So the answer requires some critical thought and reflection and self-awareness, which ultimately is going to prepare the individual to show up in the world with an intent. So not only does this opportunity provide, you know, scholarship opportunity, but it's also um, provides an opportunity to gain wisdom about oneself. And that's kind of the invisible goal of REMCAD when training all of our future art stars. We have several opportunities for students to earn institutional grants that are competitive, merit-based, and academic scholarships. We also accept external scholarships, 529 plans, VA benefits, tuition assistance, and portfolio review scholarships. Additionally, we are in affordable tuition, about the third of the cost of other art and design educations. And when you get to the step of filling out your FAFSA, we have a fantastic financial aid team who will walk you through your financial options. Look at these admission steps. You're gonna notice there's no ACT or SAT score required because that we feel that does not show the potential for a creative arts student. However, you are required to submit a portfolio, but don't get nervous about that. An admissions counselor will help you prepare for success. In fact, Rick Einstein is one of our admissions counselors here with us today, um, and he'll be able to chat with you. And there's his email listed there. You may also RSVP to the online open house that we have, and this is going to be an opportunity for you guys to see more examples of how with creativity, all things are possible. Hope to see you then and stay weird. Thanks, Juliet. Hey, everyone. This is Marty with Columbia College Chicago. 
located in the Windy City, Chicago, IL. Uh, I want to start by saying what a treat it is to, to share some space and time with you all. Thanks for uh, WACAC for putting on this opportunity and certainly thanks for all of my awesome and inspiring colleagues, the other creative arts institutions. Students, I hope you're staying well. Hope you're staying inspired and I hope that you're staying engaged. Uh, my pronouns are he and him and I am the assistant director of regional admissions at Columbia. Uh, I'm based mostly in Los Angeles but I travel quite a bit to Nevada. Um, I am also uh, going back home to Chicago quite a bit. Uh, so thanks again for being with us. Columbia College Chicago, we are a school devoted entirely to creative works. Uh, so we are actually not affiliated with any other Columbia's. Uh, we are truly our own institution located exclusively in downtown Chicago. Uh, our educational model is one that focuses absolutely on creative work. We're also a liberal arts college, uh, and we also have students study some level of business or marketing as part of their Columbia experience. So what are students experiencing at Columbia? Well, as we heard tonight, um, some of our classes are meeting in person. You see an example of this right now. Uh, very much we are a school that encourages and really expects our students to contribute to the life and the culture of the city of Chicago. No matter what you're doing as a Columbia student, we want you to share that work and share your talents off campus also. Um, collaboration and collaboration with difference is critical. Uh, as an institution that uh, wants to create new ways of thinking and doing and, and creating new work, we have to work with our differences. We have to have space for conversation about our work. Um, we really have to make sure that all voices, all perspectives, all abilities are represented on our campus. Uh, so the other institutions shared tonight, it's a hands-on learning model. You know, we really advocate that that's how students learn this work. It's not by sitting in a lecture hall, but by getting the tools and the facilities to actually create and advance your creative work. And then the end goal is networking and career preparation. And I think all of this works simultaneously and harmoniously as part of your Columbia experience. So just some stats, we're around 7,000 students in total. 99% um, uh, of our students received aid this past year. Uh, super proud that that number is getting closer to 100%. 60% uh, of our new students identified, uh, self-identified as students of color, and 25% of our new students self-identified as first-generation college students. Um, generally speaking, our programs are, are focused on the media and digital arts, visual arts, performing arts, music and sound arts, communication, writing arts, and then of course the business and the management to support all of the aforementioned. Here's a much more comprehensive list of our programs. Uh, but again, I wanna highlight um, maybe the thing that you're not interested in because I think one of the great things about all of our institutions here tonight is that we have our creative others represented there. Uh, so really getting outside of your major and getting outside of your own work and starting to realize how other students at the same college you're attending can support your work and likewise you supporting theirs. Um, applying to Columbia very quickly, uh, we are absolutely a holistic and rolling admission process. Um, we don't have any super hard deadlines for admission, um, but obviously a lot of our students do apply um, kind of in this, this time frame. We've always been test optional for admission and I am encouraging students this year to not even worry about the test. Uh, so please don't, don't stress about that. Um, and then some application um, materials, if you will, and specifically about auditions and portfolios will vary. Um, so very quickly, um, if you are applying for any of our BA or Bachelor of Arts programs or Bachelor of Science degree programs, a portfolio is optional, but we would want you to submit a portfolio or audition to be considered for talent scholarships. However, if you're applying for one of our Bachelor of Fine Arts degrees or Bachelor of Music programs, um, there are audition and portfolio requirements. Everything will be done digitally this year. Um, it's certainly a lot of opportunity to have conversation around your work. So screenshot this if you wanna get some more information. Uh, likewise, we have a virtual open house happening an entire weekend in mid-November. Uh, there's a QR code at the top of this slide if you wanna get taken straight to our registration page. Um, but this is just one of the opportunities to get to connect with, with me and certainly to get to know Chicago. So here is my contact information. Again, if you have any questions or point of support moving forward, give me a shout. I'll be here to help you. In the meantime, my friends, I really mean it when I say that I hope you're, you're staying inspired, you're staying well, staying engaged. Uh, and be good to yourselves and each other out there. Try not to stress too much about this process and really focus your energy on your work, your creative ambition, and again, celebrating all the great potential and talents that you have. So I am going to, I hope delicately, hand it off to a lovely colleague in a very fine city on the East Coast of Philadelphia. Um, hey, Dan, it's good to see you again. 
Um, yeah, I'll hand it over to the University of the Arts. Perfect. Thanks for taking care of that transition, Marty. Good to see you as well. Take it away, Sarah. Thank you. I am going to share my screen for you all. Okay, so uh, my name is Sarah Serator. I am from the University of the Arts here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Um, I work primarily with students here uh, in the city of Philadelphia, but also the entire West Coast as well. So I have the luxury of maybe walking to a high school visit, um, but also then flying six or so hours to my next high school visit. Um, so it's kind of the best of both worlds, but right now everything's virtual, so it's all good. <laughs> Um, for those of you who may not be familiar with the University of the Arts, we are an art focused university with over 30 different majors. We have 29 minors and we have 13 grad programs. Our programs span across the visual and performing arts, um, as well as the liberal arts. We have creative writing, sculpture, animation, vocal performance, music business, graphic design, illustration, and really the list goes on and on. If you want to take a more in-depth look at any of our programs, feel free to check us out at uarts.edu slash programs. You can find information about our curriculum, our faculty and alumni profiles, as well as student current work. Um, so I really recommend heading over to that website for a more in-depth look. What I like most to talk about uh, are our alumni. So that's what I'm gonna kind of start off with. So this is Gianna, she came from the small town in New Jersey. And then this is Udi who came from Los Angeles, California. Gianna was passionate about photography while Udi uh, had a love of dance, but they both chose UArts as a place to hone their skills. In 2013, Gianna received her BFA in photography from UArts and went on to work as a photographer for Urban Outfitters. She has now worked her way up to being the art director for the women's department at Urban, which is headquartered in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, Udi graduated from the dance department in 2016 and within a few years has already danced with Beyonce and is featured in a number of her music videos. So as you can see, <clears throat> from finding a passion to really studying intensely at UArts to then landing jobs in their career shortly after graduation, both of these alumni followed a pretty defined path and are continuing to grow as professional artists. That being said, you do not always have to take such a straightforward path. This is Amberella. She also graduated with a BFA in photography from UArts, but she used her electives to, as an opportunity to experiment with something she thought sounded interesting. She took a wheat pasting class and really fell in love with it. And she's now a prominent street artist whose work can be found in Philadelphia as well as the West Coast. And she's also created works for companies like Live Nation and Doc Martin. These are just a few of our alumni stories who are really making an impact on the world. Um, some are fine artists showing their work in museums, others are performers touring internationally, and many of them work for companies like these. We have Apple, Cosmo, HBO, Facebook, Instagram, and if you really want to check out any more alumni stories, you can go to uarts.edu slash alum. When your passion is in the arts, you can be whatever you want to be and you should be. <clears throat> the second someone tries to put you in a box, it really stifles your creativity. But creativity is what really matters most at UArts. So we allow you to study across different disciplines. If you wanna be a dancer, but you wanna take a painting class, you can do that. Maybe you're a musician interested in glass blowing, you can do that too. Or a graphic designer that might wanna take a dance class for non-majors, that's acceptable. You don't have to be X, Y, or Z, you can be all three and more. And that's really what kind of makes UArts different. We also offer professional experiences for you to take advantage of. All of our visual artists are required to complete internships. Our performing artists aren't required, but they are highly encouraged. Um, and we're right in the heart of Center City, Philadelphia, which is an art-centric city in itself with tons of museums, performance spaces, parks, and restaurants. We have tons of clubs and organizations, ways to get involved on our campus, things that are always going on. But also we do like giving back to the community and being involved in the city of Philadelphia. There's over 300,000 college students in Philly and we have partnerships and programs that really let you give back. We have ladies of service and we're a part of the mural arts program, which is the nation's largest public art program. 
and it's produced over 3,000 murals in Philadelphia. Right in the heart of all of it are our four apartment style residence halls. Um, they're all apartment style living, very unique. We have three dining halls as well, a late night grab and go and an all day, but we're Philadelphia. When it comes to food, you name it, you can probably find it in Philly. We are a huge foodie city, coffee shops every few blocks, we're a quick walk to Chinatown and Reading Terminal Market as well. If you want to take a little peek at our campus more in depth, you can take a virtual tour with us as well. Just to get to the nit and gritty, um, our application process is four easy steps. You're going to submit your online application with a writing sample, your high school transcripts, and then you'll either complete a portfolio, audition, or interview depending on what program you are interested in. I also want to throw out our hashtag, you artist, if you're interested in seeing works for our, from our faculty, our students, our staff, and alumni. It's a really great place to kind of see what's going on at UArts as well. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me directly. I am happy to answer them um, at any time, and I look forward to maybe seeing your art in the future. Great, thank you so much. Just a reminder to our attendees that you can ask uh, questions at the bottom of your screen using the Q&A tool, and our presenters would be more than happy to answer those for you. So next up, we have Pacific Northwest College of Art. Hello, everyone. I'm going to share my screen and then begin my presentation. So just give me one second here. OK. So here we are. Um, my name is Taylor Mund. I'm one of the undergrad admissions counselors at Pacific Northwest College of Art. Um, within this presentation, I'm going to be briefly talking about uh, majors and minors, the application process, scholarships, and a little bit about um, the city in Portland, but mainly emphasize on um, the institution. Um, my contact is T. M-U-N-D underscore admissions at pnca.edu. So I'd love to talk with you um, in the Q&A session afterwards. So getting into the presentation, uh, this is our main campus building. Uh, we're located downtown Portland, Oregon in the Arts Pearl District. Um, you're the, where the school is located, there's about 20 contemporary art galleries within a four block radius of the school. So you're very much within the arts community. Um, and within the broader Portland Metro, there's many other kind of artsy neighborhoods where there's a lot of um, traditional and non-traditional spaces to exhibit artwork. Um, something that's really exciting that recently happened, um, PNCA has now partnered with Willamette University. Um, what this means is that PNCA will stay independent as an uh, independent institution. We're just underneath the umbrella of Willamette University. And Willamette is in Salem, Oregon, about an hour south uh, of Portland. Um, as this uh, partnership transitions, there's going to be a lot more opportunity for students in the future. This is our mission statement. PNC empowers artists and designers to reimagine what art and design can do in the world. PNC students balance studies in the humanities and science uniquely to their students in an art college with hands-on art making in studios and labs. Undergraduate students choose from um, 11 majors. That's a, a typo, my bad. 11 majors and eight minors and benefit from interdisciplinary collaboration through their fine art and design education. Um, so within your first year is going to be your foundation year of taking your core foundation classes, basically taking a class in almost all the majors that we offer. It's a way to kind of get your feet wet, um, understand of what the possibilities there are. Um, and then your second year, that's when you declare your major at that point and be taking more specific classes related to your major, um, but also taking classes outside of that. We're a very interdisciplinary school um, and we're, our staff and faculty really encourage our students to work cross interdisciplinary. That way you walk away from PNC with a wide range of skills, um, knowledge of different processes and different mediums that just make yourselves a lot more marketable um, within the arts community. So now I'm going to kind of briefly touch on the majors, uh, but put more emphasis on um, the application process and scholarships and portfolio and things like that. Um, we have creative writing. Um, this is a great major for students who are thinking about a creative dialogue, whether it be short stories, books, poems, things like that. Um, printmaking, you know, learn how to use, um, do screen printing, a relief, intaglio, letterpress, bookmaking, and then uh, um, sorry, blank, my mind's going blank right now. Um, 
lithography. Um, general fine arts is great for students that are want to kind of create their own curriculum. Um, you're taking your core classes in painting, printmaking, and sculpture, but not limited to that. And then within the painting program, um, it's very experimental. We kind of challenge our students to think outside of the box. It's not just paint on canvas. It can be more performative, um, installation-based, um, sculptural-based painting as well. Within our sculpture program, we have a brand new sculpture facility called Glass. It's a 30,000 square foot industrial space. Um, it's an offsite location. We have access to a full ceramics department, um, metal shop, wood shop, textiles department, and ceramics studio. Uh, graphic design and illustration are both client-based majors, so we require students to take an internship. Um, but within these majors, we're really developing students' artistic voice, because that's what's really going to set you apart from um, the rest of your peers and the greater um, community of uh, art makers. So um, working on your uh, individual uh, artistic voice um, and being proficient in um, many different programs within illustration and graphic design. Animated arts is uh, one of the most popular majors at PNCA. Portland, Oregon is kind of one of the hubs for experimental based animation. I'll be learning how to do digital animation, uh, 3D stop motion animation, 2D stop motion, and kind of traditional techniques of um, drawing frame by frame. And Leica Studios is in town. Um, they're responsible for Coraline, Bojack, or excuse me, Coraline, um, Kubo and the Two Strings, The Missing Link, um, Shadow Machines in town. Um, as well as a handful of other well-known animation studios. Video and sound uh, is a great major for students that are experimenting in, in video work and, and sound design. Um, photography is another experimental based major where we really challenge our students to um, think about photography in new um, ways, um, fantastic facilities with our um, black and white dark room, as well as our large lighting studio with an infinity wall separated between white and green. And then the intermedia major, um, this is for students that, um, again, wanted to develop their own curriculum. So it's just kind of like general fine arts where you're choosing your core classes. A lot of students will do performances in this major. Within our minors, um, you have graphic design, uh, creative writing, art and ecology, fashion, drawing, ceramics, art history, and um, yeah, so this is a great opportunity to kind of challenge yourself outside of, of your major and, and, and really work on different aspects related to your area of study. Um, Focus week, uh, this is for seniors. Um, first semester seniors will give their thesis presentation or their proposal, excuse me. Um, speaking about for 15, about 25 minutes of what their final project is going to be, um, giving examples of their own artwork as well as other artists' work, artwork stylistically or conceptually that you're thinking about. Um, and that is going to be um, first and second uh, semester of your senior year. And then uh, we have um, application process, um, uh, 10 to 15 images um, for your portfolio. There's no portfolio restrictions, um, unofficial transcripts, and then optional essay portion. And every accepted student is guaranteed um, scholarships as well. So that's gonna take it for my time. Uh, I wanna thank everyone for um, I'm viewing all of my wonderful colleagues and their schools that they represent. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, so our final panelist tonight, um, our presenter will be from Cornish College of the Arts. Awesome. Thanks so much. Let me just pull up the screen. All righty. Hi, everyone. My name is Albert Rubio, and I'm an admissions counselor at Cornish College of the Arts. Cornish is a four-year visual and performing arts college located in Seattle, Washington. We're over 100 years old, and we are one of the only arts colleges in the country where visual and performing artists study together. There's a few in this room. Our founder, Nellie Cornish, and the many teaching artists who followed her believed in education through exposure to all the arts. And this led to some of the greatest innovations in the arts during the early 20th century. It shaped much of how we create and appreciate work today and helped put the Pacific Northwest on the map as a thriving arts community. Our mission is to provide students aspiring to become practicing artists with an educational program of the highest possible quality in an environment that nurtures creativity and intellectual curiosity while preparing them to contribute to society as artists, citizens, and innovators. 
We realized this mission by offering baccalaureate studies in the performing and visual arts and by serving as a focal point in the community for public presentation, artistic criticism, participation, and discussion of the arts. Our degrees are uh, designed to build the skills artists need. We educate our artists in critical thinking, creative problem solving, collaboration, and the generation of new work. Our students are focusing on traditional interdisciplinary and experimental art forms. And our faculty are required to be working artists and they're also committed mentors. And they maintain thriving careers in their respective fields, which provides them with a lot of the knowledge and skill necessary to train artists of the 21st century. Our community is also dedicated to small classes, mentorship and personalized instruction with an average class size of 13 and a faculty to student ratio of one to seven. Artists studying at Cornish get the individualized and personal instruction that they need. Our urban campus is also immersed within the arts and culture of Seattle, one of the world's epicenters for the visual and performing arts, which makes it an ideal city for you to pursue your artistic education. Seattle houses some of the country's best live music, theater, and dance companies, a popular music scene that has garnered national and international attention, and about 20 live theater venues. And Pioneer Square is known as one of the country's most prominent art gallery districts. Seattle is also home to the Fifth Avenue Theater, Seattle International Film Festival, Seattle Art Museum, and the Upstream and Bumbershoot Music Festivals, to name a few. Essentially, we are a thriving professional community for practicing artists, and Cornish has been at the forefront of the Seattle creative scene for more than 100 years. All of the companies and creative organizations you just saw, we have students, faculty, and um, alumni working at those spaces all the time. Um, our campus is also located within Seattle's South Lake Union District and it's surrounded by creative agencies, architecture and design firms, many nonprofits, and is within walk distance from prominent creative spaces for art and culture. You'll find Cornish alumni, faculty and students making bold innovative work all over town. Our students have access to a wide variety of state-of-the-art creative and performance spaces. And these spaces are available for use by all majors, regardless of discipline. We also believe in that interdisciplinary um, way of training artists. Our visual artists are making art in individual and shared studios, materials labs, editing and recording suites, and more. And our performance artists rehearse, perform, and learn in a wide array of practice spaces, black box studios, historic concert halls, and the iconic Cornish Playhouse. And that's located in Seattle Center, which is where the Space Needle is. And that's a complex that houses many large scale arts and performance venues. Currently at Cornish, we train students from 38 states and 18 different countries, and many of them choose to live in the Cornish Commons, which is our state-of-the-art 20-story residence hall built with artists in mind. The Commons features plenty of space and special amenities like private baths, movement studios, practice rooms, and an art studio. The 20th floor is also reserved just for residents, boasting amazing views in all directions. Cornish offers Bachelor of Fine Arts degrees in animation, art, design, environmental graphics, film, illustration, object design, game arts, interior architecture, interaction design or UX design, dance, technical theater, musical theater, and a degree in acting and original works. For music, we offer a Bachelor of Music and for transfer students applying with an associate's degree or equivalent, we offer a Bachelor of Arts option in art, dance, music, theater, technical theater, and film. Fun fact, um, last year, Cornish College of the Arts became the first arts college in the country to lower tuition by 20%. And we award over 6 million in scholarships each year to over 95% of our students, with all admitted students being automatically considered for merit scholarships that are guaranteed for four years. If you're interested in applying to Cornish, you can go to apply.cornish.edu slash apply, or you can apply through the Common App as well. And right on that screen are all of our requirements. Priority consideration is given to students who apply for admission and financial aid by our early action deadline of December 1, and all those applying for scholarship consideration should apply by February 15th. After the February 15th deadline, applications will be considered on a space available basis. Thanks for listening, and we hope that some of y'all will consider applying to Cornish this year.
Great, uh, thank you so much. Um, so uh, this concludes our session and I would like to take an opportunity to thank each of our um, presenters for joining us. Um, when you close out of this particular window, there will be a link to a very quick uh, question, um, some survey questions, and we would appreciate any feedback that you could provide to us. Also, this is just one in many different sessions that are being hosted, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions. And also, as a reminder, this particular session was recorded and will be available within about a week where you did register for the session. So with that being said, I'd like to thank you again for attending tonight, and I hope you have a good evening. Thank you.